All right, we want to make a meticulously cut in, you know, well stacked layers of uh, grassy colored craft paper. Uh, but we need a digital elevation model. Um, in our case, we, we will use Derek uh, Watkins um, application that allows you to download the set uh, in 90 meter resolution. And um, once you download the data set, you're gonna, <coughs> for your specific area, you're gonna, <coughs> uh, well, um, unzip it in your folder. And once you do that, you will uh, uh, mosaic all the data set because, well, it's clear your area gonna involve or have various um, mosaics that need to be uh, sticked together. And we will use mosaic to new raster tool in our GIS Pro. So, um, I'm quickly uh, setting my tool with all the input parameters that are required and um, I'll use uh, the projection that one of the rears uh, uses and then I'll include, I'll use 8-bit unsigned, so at the band is one, this is digital elevation model then you leave everything else as it is and boom you have your uh, mosaic data and then you remove everything else and we want to explore the um the metadata information on the source of these newly created mosaic data set you can see the columns rows um the size you know the projection and all that kind of information well, you can see the level of detail is so high, even if, um, despite us picking 90, uh, 90 meter uh, resolution. So, we'll go ahead and use um, uh, focus statistics. Uh, you need to have a um, spatial statistic license to be able to use this tool. And what this tool does is uh, we want to bra our digital elevation model to reduce the level of uh, detail. Uh, note the neighbor part, we used circle and um, that should be that. So uh, the tool gives us a blurred digital elevation with reduced level of detail you can tell uh, when I'm uh, ticking on and off. So zoom that to layer and uh, I don't need the uh, new uh, the mosaic dataset, so I can do away with that and then get the uh, broad one. So I'll get to contours. I can use the 3D analysis tool or the spatial analysis one. So I'll go with any because they are all the same. And then I'll specify my uh, digital vision model. Here I used an interval 250, uh, the contour intervals. Well, you can you can set the way you wish, yeah. And we will download the paper cut style provided by John Nelson. I'll include a link um, of where you can get this resource so that you can download it. And I'll show you how to uh, get it into ArcGIS Pro. So you will go into view, uh, catalog view, and then there is the styles. You right click and then you add the style. You navigate to where. Uh, the newly downloaded style uh, was saved so and you're done so now you have the style and here you we will use in primary symbology we'll use unique values which is rarely used and then um, just playing around with the color scheme of my uh, stacked paper you know just playing around so you need to make sure that uh, you pick your favorite color well it can always uh, be whatever you want so make sure you play around with um, the colors that are there and make sure that uh, um, it's something which is aesthetically clean yeah so i'm so in around here you can see uh, my stacked uh, grassy paper is um, is starting to draw Oh my god, this area is so beautiful. And uh, yeah, you can see uh, our stacked layers of uh, grassy colored craft paper is 
drawing um, from the lowest uh, areas to the highest areas. This section is uh, found in Ethiopia, uh, south of Lake Tana. Yeah, you can tell because you can see the Red Sea, a stretch of a Red Sea somewhere. Well, I'm adding uh, populated presses which I'll use as pins. I've already clipped them um, uh, using my shape area, so we will use those as uh, clip pins to make sure that, you know, and just right, sort of hanging somewhere, you know, the way you could use pins to pin your poster somewhere. So that's the same thing that I'm replicating here. And then uh, I'll give each uh, of these, you know, uh, I'll give them a graduated color as well, you know. It's just a matter of playing around with what you want. And then I'll not change anything, but I'll do uh, change the color scheme for all of these uh, uh, pins uh, to you know give each of them a, a different color. Just playing around, you can, you can decide to give them the same color, but I usually find it intuitive to give them different colors. And then I'll randomly mm, press them because you know. I don't want it to uh, make it look so artificial, so I random repress the pin by uh, going to the random section and then, yeah, we got it. So once we've got that, we I don't, don't, don't forget to keep saving your project because anything can happen and you don't want that thing to happen when you've not sh uh, shaped all your, uh, I mean, saved all your changes. So I'll go ahead and uh, you know get my layout. Um, in this case, because I'm already zooming in into a specific area of uh, north of Lake Tana, I will um, set my layout into more of a square shape. So I'll play around with the properties and then uh, maybe with uh, 18 and. You know, just playing around with it and seeing how it appears. So, um, yeah, so just playing around with it and pressing my contents, zooming in and out. If it's not clear, going back to the layout, you know, having 15 uh, for uh, wind and hay. You know, you can just play around with it. It depends on how, what you want to achieve at the end. And yeah, I, I got me, I ended up using um, uh, 15 by. 17 by 18 by 15 for wind 18 and for height 15 and I got it so I'll remove the boundaries of my layout into save it to no color and you give it time uh, you, you, you give your contents time to draw well and I would like to say here that uh, your content will um, will take different times to draw depending on the level of detail and the extent to which your areas are drawing. And then I'll give my um, content a title. I called it a sliced topography of Ethiopia even though this is not the whole section of Ethiopia. And then I'm playing around with text, uh, the type cases, the fonts. Um, well, you can go ahead and use your uh, favorite fonts. I'm not going to dictate which one you should use here because I always use a different one. And then I'm using um, a text fill symbol because I usually see it very aesthetically clean to, you know, have a, a, a feel in my text. Yeah, so just bring around with it here. And um, yeah, I'm saving my contents now. It's done. So let's see how it looks. Oh my God, so clean. So clean, you can tell. And.